designer, as, a, as an artist, architect, designer, um, a lot of the work that I do is also like mathematically driven. And, and what I mean by that is that it's either uh, designed through a series of equations or it's designed by data that informs those equations and therefore design the, the, define the form. Um, this case specifically, it's a sculpture. Um, this case, um, which they look kind of similar, but this is the structure for a museum. Um, these are, again, like other like uh, fashion elements. So it's uh, it, it doesn't really matter um, what the scale is. It doesn't matter what the function is. At the end, um, it's the elements of design, right? How do we design spaces? How do we design elements? And how do these pieces um, co combine to, to make something new, um, whether it's something that is static or it's dynamic or it's something that's like evolving or generative, et cetera. So when we talk about architecture, and I think that the, the, the most uh, re relevant or prevalent thing that I want to be speaking here um, in terms of the metaverse is how does form, how does the design of architectural form um, end up affecting the way that people behave inside of it? And what I mean with behave is that the way that people move inside of a space um, really is determined by the shape of the architectural building. And whether um, this is something that we're fully aware of or not, um, it, it does it does happen. The way that you sit in a theater, the way that you walk through a museum, uh, the way that you look at books in a library. Um, these are all things that uh, are by design by the architectural building. And these are what we would call typologies. It's just um, what do each of these different uh, forms or categories of buildings look like? Office buildings tend to look similar to each other. Museums tend to look similar to each other, et cetera, right? So why is this, right? And it has to do with the programming and how we want people to be acting inside. So the moment that we give form or in a way be able to like transform this into something different, um, it really changes the way that people interact with the content or the program inside of it. And therefore it also changes the way that people um, form, communicate, and therefore build a community inside of there as well. So I'm going to start um, with um, with a project Google headquarters, which was with BR Kingles group. And here, um, what was really interesting for us was thinking about how we're changing the shape of the office. Like, what does it mean to design an office for the 21st century, right? Where it's not just about doing like independent work, but it, it has a big component about a community aspect of seeing other people's sh uh, shared work environments. So we go through like a, uh, looking at the like what again, like the typology is the form of how um, the office has evolved through time from the Renaissance office to Taylorism to then action office, which led into the cute farm um, and then work and play, which is what we would most likely um, um, relate to the movement of shared workspaces. Um, for example, we work right. And then from this element of being able to mix work and play and having an environment that is more uh, flexible for the for the user, for the for the workspace, um, we see um, new new buildings, for example, the Apple Park um, by Foster, which really like um, enhanced um, this new form of behavior. And with Google, um, the idea here is that we, we really want to focus on what does it mean to have a community office? Like, what does it mean to have 7,000 people under one single roof that are um, spending like, their day working, but also playing, also eating. There is different uh, elements of, of, of different, um, I guess like uh, d different programming, whether it's uh, through entertainment or cultural, et cetera, but it, it's really about building a community, a community that is uh, working under, under the same ethos or for the same purpose. So when we thought about this design, um, the, the idea is like, how, what is this canopy that can encapsulate everything that's inside of it, right? So if we can have a huge canopy that encapsulates uh, an entire uh, space for 7,000 people working inside, then how do we design it in a way that allows for everything else to be functional inside of it? So how are the acoustics going to be functional? How is the daylighting? Um, how is, when I mean daylighting, the natural daylighting that's going to pierce through the structure going to be functional? Uh, and essentially, like, how do we make sure that an environment like this um, ends up being uh, or, or fulfilling the purpose that, that it was designed for? So this is where um, parametric design or computational design uh, fits in the sense that it's no longer about just like designing a unique piece, but really understanding what are the parameters, uh, what is the data that's going to be informing the shape of this building. Um, in this case, uh, the Google headquarters is a static building. It's not opening up or changing itself throughout the day or based on interaction. It's a static building. But but even so, um, the way that designed, it's, um, it, it's parametric. And I think that what's really relevant here to think is that the way that this is being designed if it were to be in the metaverse, it's something that the data, because it's changing day by day, right? 
the data is changing day by day. Um, it's changing also based on how the people are, are, are acting and, and, and behaving inside, as I mentioned, um, then how could the building also be transforming, right? In the metaverse, in virtual spaces, things don't have to be static, things don't have to be consistently the same. So it's a, it's a beautiful overlap of like, what are the aspects that could be the same as we would call a digital double between the physical and the virtual relationship of a building or a design or like whether that design is a uh, is from you know architecture to fashion or any anything else that can go inside of the metaverse but what's really interesting is, is to question that what parts need to be the same what parts could potentially be different so these are renders of how it looks inside um and then um, this is the process of construction. It's been under construction for the past like three, four years now. Um, it's very near completion. Um, so yeah, this is Google. 